Diffusion and osmosis are two types of transport mechanisms. In order for our bodies to obtain the nutrients from the food we eat, our cells must be able to absorb those nutrients. This can be done by either active transport, which requires energy, or by passive transport, which relies solely on the motion of the molecules and ions themselves. The primary type of passive transport is diffusion. Diffusion is the net movement of a molecule or ion from a region where it is highly concentrated to a region where it's less concentrated. So here, the red magnets represent solute. They're more concentrated on side B. So they will tend to move towards side A, where they're less concentrated. Our cells are capable of absorbing nutrients because the cell membrane is selectively permeable, meaning that some molecules and ions can diffuse freely through the membrane, while others cannot. A sieve can be used to demonstrate a selectively permeable membrane on a macroscopic level. Depending on the size of the sieve screen, some materials will pass through and others will not. Here I have a sanded pebbles mixture obtained from a local lake. The sieve can work as a selectively permeable membrane to separate the sand from the pebbles. It is obviously not feasible to observe nutrients moving in and out of human cells in a high school classroom. Therefore, we use dialysis tubing as a model of the cell membrane. Dialysis tubing is made of cellulose perforated with microscopic pores. The pores are small enough that it can be used to model the behavior of a cell membrane with respect to the size of the molecules that will or will not diffuse through them. Not only do molecules and ions travel back and forth across the cell membrane, but water does as well. Water travels through cell membranes by a process known as osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane. So here, the water is more concentrated on side A, represented by the blue magnets, than it is on side B. So overall, the net movement is gonna be of water from side A to side B. That doesn't mean that these molecules can't come back to side A, but overall the net movement will be from side A to side B. To demonstrate dialysis tubing at work, we can conduct a simple experiment using the characteristic reaction of starch and iodine. When starch and iodine react with each other, they form a characteristic blue-black color. We start by filling a beaker with distilled water and add a small amount of iodine. We then fill a piece of dialysis tubing, which is tied at one end with the starch solution. Then close the other end of the bag by tying it shut, but try to leave as little air as possible. It is important here to secure both ends of the bag tightly. Rinse off the outside of the bag with distilled water and pat it dry. Rinsing is important to remove any starch solution from the outside of the bag that could yield a false positive result. Now we want to measure osmosis. Before we place the bag in the iodine solution, we have to gently dry and mass the bag. Record this initial mass because we are going to compare it later. Then place the bag in the beaker of iodine solution and wait 25 to 30 minutes to reach equilibrium. Okay. What do our results tell us? Remember, when starch and iodine interact, they produce a bluish black color. The solution in the beaker appears the same light brown as it did in the beginning of the reaction. This tells us the starch did not diffuse out of the model cell. However, the solution in the model cell is now a bluish black. Since it initially contained a starch solution, the presence of color tells us that iodine was able to diffuse inside of the cell. Now let's look at the results of our osmosis test. If water molecules diffused into or out of the model cell, the mass of the bag should change. Did it? As you can see, using dialysis tubing properly is an important laboratory skill. We are able to use these materials to apply how diffusion and osmosis occurs in a way that is analogous to what happens in our own cells. Now, is this the entire story of how molecules diffuse into and out of cells? No, of course not. Other factors come into play, such as polarity. It is important to remember, while this model does demonstrate one aspect of cell permeability, it is a model and not identical to all properties of a cell membrane.